Number four, adversity proves the character of our friendships. This is a kind of a convoluted little section of this passage, but I think if you listen carefully, we can unpack it and you'll, you'll get what's going on here. In verse 15, Paul says that while he's in prison, some indeed were preaching Christ even from envy and strife, and some also from goodwill. The former preached Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my chains, but the latter out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and in this I rejoice, yes, and I will rejoice. Now here's what's going on. Paul's in prison and he looks out and he's getting information from his buddies and they keep telling him what's going on in the church and what they're telling him is that some of his associates have taken advantage of his imprisonment to advance their own careers. And actually they're using the adversity that's going on in Paul's life to make things better for themselves. I know that doesn't happen today, but it happened back in Bible days. (laughs) These people weren't false teachers. They preached the gospel. But Paul saw that they were using his incarceration for purposes that weren't godly. As he described those who were preaching for the wrong reasons, he used an interesting word. He said they were preaching from selfish ambition. That phrase means to canvas for office in order to get people to support you. Their aim was to get people to follow them. Paul's aim was to get people to follow Christ. They were building a following for themselves and they were using Paul's imprisonment as a platform upon which to preach that message. But watch what Paul did. He didn't rail against them. He didn't send somebody to correct them. He sorted this out. He tried to come to some resolution. And here's what he said. He rejoiced that Christ was being preached Even if it was not as he wanted it to be, he knew that though Christ might not honor the motive of the messenger, Christ would always honor the message. Do you know that sometimes people get saved listening to a message preached by somebody who may not even know Jesus Christ himself? The power isn't in the messenger. The power's in the message. You set the message free. And so Paul said, okay, I don't like this. I've certainly got a revelation of who these people are. How many of you know when you go through adversity, you figure out who your friends really are? Isn't that true? Some of them that you thought were really your friends, adversity sorts it out quickly. Paul got his friends sorted out when he went to prison. And the bottom line was, and here's Paul, he cared about one thing, the gospel. I don't care who preaches it. I don't like what they're doing. I don't think what they're doing is right. But thank God the word of God is being set free. 